Okay, so good morning, uh, afternoon, whatever it happens to be. <laughs> um, stopped by the acrylic place, you know, they're going to start getting to know me by name here pretty soon. But um, let me see if I can show you what I got. Just got some more acrylic glass, uh, some sandpaper, the glue applicator, and down here I got the glue. Um, kind of looking forward to trying this out. The, I got all the way up to 400, but this is 600, and I got to go see if I can find a some higher ones I just do some polishing on it but to start okay so today I'm out on a different part of the trail that I normally walk and hopefully I'll be able to get some good photos for you this is a little more scenic than some of the other parts that I walk along the trails up here in Fort Collins there's several um, but <laughs> I'm sitting here as or not sitting here, but I'm thinking as I'm walking, and uh, I'm mulling over some emails I've been going back and forth with with a publicist um, for my children's book. <laughs> um, they offer some amazing services, and they're not half bad price considering some of the other people that I've talked to. Uh, the current one that I'm thinking of working with but it's still crazy expensive um, especially for children's books um, the service isn't different for children's books but um, for those of you that don't know is is um, children's books tend to make a little less money per book sold uh, just because the books are, you know, you have to keep them a little more, uh, they're not as expensive. Um, I mean, you got 32 pages, uh, it seems to be the magic number for most children's books. And someone's not going to pay 20 bucks for a 32 page book. <laughs> um, I think the most, the most expensive book of mine, uh, children's books, is... I think my hardcover is $14, um, and hardcovers tend to go a little more than the, the paperbacks, which my paperback is $9.95 for the one book that I have out at the moment. And I'm not on the high end, I'm pretty average, maybe actually just a little bit lower, but still only make anywhere from 30 to 60 cents a book, and then uh, the hardcover goes up to about a buck. Um, and, uh, the ebook, which is $3.99, I think, um, actually make the most off of that one. I think I'm at around $1.40, I think. <laughs> I mean, it might, might be $1.20. But, you know, just to pay for some of the stuff from the publicists, publicists, um, looking at three to five thousand dollars a month um, but the audience that I'd reach is crazy because I mean that's um, that's 15 to 30 um, appearances on radio stations um, and then there's different things where they They'll manage anything that you know any news that might come up about me um, anytime that there's something a big story about something that's kind of about my book they send out um, not about my book but in the genre or the topics of my books they'll send out news releases to try to get um, them to come talk to me about it uh, since, you know, I have books in that, uh, you know, along the storyline. Um, and they're constantly trying to get local, um, national cable and national network. Or, you know, non-cable, like Channel 4, stuff like that. Um, CPS, sorry. <laughs> um 
they're constantly trying to get those kind of stories and you have to pay extra for those if they are able to book them but I mean if you're on national news it's well worth the small fee that they charge for that um, so I really want to do all that but you know I'd have to sell anywhere from four to ten thousand books a month to be able to cover the expense but again I mean it's that's business you gotta weigh pros and cons and and is it gonna be able to generate that kind of um, publicity and and as I have more and more books out there you know it'll definitely help from the very beginning so that's what I'm mulling over um, I don't have the money to do it at the moment but they're also a prepaid service or not a prepaid but a um, pay as you go you know if we get the attention if we book you something then you pay us for it um, so I'll have to keep discussing it with them and see what happens and see what I can expect and I mean there's no guarantees in marketing but man that would be nice okay I've talked enough I think I'm gonna do a video here real quick of the nature area I'm right next to so this is one of several little ponds that are in this area um, all this area is um, paid for by Lotto Colorado Lottery well in part I guess but it's maintained by the city and, and it's a beautiful area around here I don't come here to walk a lot I didn't during the, the winter just because it's not as you know it's a little farther out of my way but I thought I'd come here today since it's nice and nice weather and check it out it's been a while So this isn't a very good example, but you can kind of see a lot of the debris from trees and stuff like that. There's probably some areas that are worse, well, much worse, obviously, but um, I think it was last year, I want to say last year, we had a thousand year flood, um, and I'm right next to the pooter way there in the back. and. I mean, it was taking out a lot of stuff, and there was a few lakes in Love, our rivers in Loveland, the Big Thompson, that it completely destroyed the road up to um, one of our mountain towns, Estes, and uh, destroyed a lot of homes. And this is more towards the east side of of Fort Collins, but so the ooh bunny. Um, so the damage is, I mean, it's still pretty bad out here, um, and my understanding is the damage continued hundreds and hundreds of miles down the river, um, on both the Thompson and the Pooter, but there's just some of the debris from all the trees that were knocked down and all the wood that was scattered everywhere. But, obviously, it didn't, you know, nature's still going. I, they've rebuilt the most of the road. they still got a lot of work um, up to Estes. And I know there's a lot of other areas that are under repair. And I mean, you got to think it was a thousand-year flood. That's not something that... <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's not funny, but I was just thinking it's it's not something that happens very often. <laughs> a thousand year flood. <laughs> God, sometimes I can be so dumb. Here's the uh, um, cool viewing area that they have set up here in the ponds. I think there's three ponds. Three or four. But they call this the Cat Tail Chorus 
viewing area you come up this little trail and uh supposed to be able to hear all the nature i mean if if i shut up you'll probably hear it So this tree looks really cool, um, but at the same time it looks like something that could be in a like scary movie. Because <laughs> I mean it's all black and and kind of it seems to be healthy, but it it looks a little scary. Way over did that walk. Uh, not horribly, but it ended up being four miles, which is not not that bad. But I've been slowly going up from three miles, and I was doing a little bit less than that during the winter. And there was a lot of times during the winter where I didn't get to do my walk because I was working a, a full time job there for a little bit. Um. So yeah, it's. A little bit to get used to, but not horrible. I'll probably keep up in it until I get to a point where I know that I'm good, at least for this season. And then uh, I think I'm gonna go eat some lunch or dinner or something. I haven't ate today yet, so. I oh, wonder what's good. Nothing sounds good at the moment. Oh, see you guys a little later.